Shalom, brothers and sisters. For this week's Thursday Thought, I want to forgo what I originally had planned on talking about. I I know last week I made a video, Have You Read It?, which was kind of generically about any scripture that the Holy Spirit was telling you to read, encouraging you to read, but also I was talking about the plates of brass and the Torah of Moses and encouraging you to read that. And then over the weekend, I put out a video where I spent an hour answering questions that I've received about the plates of brass. And I'm going to try not to make this another hour-long video. That one was a bit much. But I, I do feel impressed by the Spirit to continue along that topic of conversation. A friend of mine sent me a message, and he, he said, you know, you mentioned you're about transparency. I think people would like to know more about your journey, how you, how you obtained these plates of brass. And even though I had something I wanted to talk about, I've been feeling all week this pull by the Spirit to continue on this topic of, of the Torah of Moses. And so, since I, I, but I didn't know what to talk about. And so I really felt that his suggestion to me truly was an answer to my prayers and help in guiding me to better listen to and follow the Spirit. So I'm going to try to go over this as best I can. I know when there, I read that Joseph Smith at one point, I, I, I want to say he was in Washington, D.C. He might have been in New York. I don't remember exactly where he was. But it was him, Sidney Rigdon, and I want to say Oliver Cowdery. I know the third person. Again, I probably should have looked the story up before making this video. That's one of the problems with doing these things off the cuff. But the thing that sticks out in my mind about the story, the reason why I want to relate it to you, is because Sidney Rigdon apparently got up, and this guy was a prolific speaker, and apparently he basically butchered his opportunity to share the message of this new, you know, restored gospel. <laughs> it's new and old. New restored gospel. Um, and... He tried really hard to kind of explain where the Book of Mormon came from and just didn't really do a very good job of it. And so Joseph Smith got up and he, he said, you know, where it came from isn't as important as its message, what it has to say. And apparently he gave a very, very good message from there. I bring that up because I want to explain to you my reasoning for sharing this with you. I do feel that this journey that that I have been on and I am on is important for me at least. And I do believe that the journey that Joseph Smith took to publish the Book of Mormon, to translate and publish the Book of Mormon, and Oliver Cowdery with him, Martin Harris, Emma Smith, all the people that were part of that story, I think that these are very, very important stories. And the reason why is because if we're supposed to be a prophetic people, we can't just look for someone to be the new Moses to climb up the mountain, right? We must engage ourselves in the work. And I want to make it clear that what I'm about to share with you is shared because I want you to have your own version of this experience I don't want you to think that you have to go out and carbon copy what happened to me. And that that is actually part of, of this, this story. So I've told you before, I was driving in my car, saying my morning prayers, and the Lord came to me and told me, I want you to translate the plates of brass. And instantly I was like, you know, why me? I'm, I'm, I'm not the guy, you know. Um, but if, if you want me to do this, then... Here's my list of demands, is, is, you know, how I'm putting it now. It's not how I said it then. But I, I genuinely believed that there was this formula that had to be followed, that Joseph Smith had set a precedence, that there had to be one translator, there had to be one person, a scribe, multiple scribes, but one person at a time, we'll say. There had to be physical plates in my hands, even understanding that Joseph Smith, whether you believe he put a rock in a hat or you believe he used the arm and thumb, he never actually looked at the plates. 
I believe that I needed the arm and thumb, and I, I did not want to use a rock and a hat. And I told the Lord that. I, no rock and a hat for me. I don't want to use a seer stone. I wanted arm and thumb. And I still do. And witnesses. Number five was witnesses. And I've told you before, you know, the Lord, when I say he laughed, it wasn't like this mean, overbearing, like, ha, 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 you silly human. It wasn't anything like that. It was more like when I asked my child to clean his room and he gives me a list of demands. And it's like, oh, you're adorable. You know, it's so sweet and so cute that you're doing this. You're still going to need to clean your room. And I think that that's important because when you look at, and I'm going to, I'm going to compare myself to a couple of different people here that whose stories I'm somewhat familiar with. And I'm going to tell you which parts I am, have read myself and which parts are hearsay. My understanding, and, and I believe I read this on their website, is that Gil from England, uh, the, the guy who, who shared the Jaranek book, and I think Rayanek is the other one. My understanding is that there was a knock at the door and there was a package, and in the package was the, the book he needed to translate and the tools to do so. And he had a scribe. You know, I, I did not, I don't think I was familiar with the Jaranek story. I know I wasn't with Mauricio um, when I was first asked to translate the, the plates of brass. So the only thing I really had in my head was Joseph Smith's story. But I know that Gil had Joseph Smith's story because he was a member of the Brigham My Church at the time. And my understanding is that he used seer stones, he poured over them, and he, someone else wrote them down, and there you go. Now, that's following somewhat the precedence, right? He didn't go to a hill and dig something up. Someone, maybe an angel, dropped it off. And that, that kind of jives with the whole idea that Moreau and I brought the plates back to Joseph Smith at one point. Returned them to him. Now, whether that means Joseph Smith went to the hill or actually physically came to him, I don't know. But I find that Gill's version of events fits the narrative at least well enough. Then you have Mauricio Burke. Mauricio is interesting because he actually got the gold plates. Now, whether they're really the gold plates or another set of gold plates, I don't know. I don't know how many sets of metal plates there are. Um, he says that there were two different sealed portions and he unsealed the portion that was allowed to be sealed for our time. And there are people who actually physically saw these plates. So just like Gil had someone who saw the, I, can, I want to say it was it was scrolls. I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure he had people who witnessed and saw them. Um, we know that Mauricio saw them. In fact, I've seen pictures of what they saw. So, yeah, that's that's pretty legit. He was given an arm and thumb, and, and now this part I'm, I'm going to tell you is hearsay. I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm sharing it with you because I find it interesting. Someone told me that at one point he thought he was being deceived, and so he destroyed the Urim and Thummim. And when he repented, he was shown how to make an Urim and Thummim. And I'm going to tell you right now, to me, you know, it's awesome that he was able to translate the sealed portion of the Book of Mormon. I want to know how to make the Urim and Thummim. If the Lord revealed that to him, then, and he has the knowledge, there's really no reason for the Lord to reveal it to me because he can teach us all how to do it. So, Mauricio, if you're watching this, brother, we would love to know how to do that. Uh, that sidebar aside, I thought the same way. There's a precedence that's been set. But when you look at the Bible, then really Joseph Smith didn't follow the precedence because he didn't do what Moses did. He didn't climb up a mountain. He wasn't he didn't bring up his own tablets. God didn't write upon them with a finger. And then he didn't come back down to give us information. I don't know of anywhere in the Bible where what we see for the restoration of all things through Joseph Smith, I, I don't see anybody else doing something exactly like that. So now we have this idea, and, and I'm telling you this because this is something I had to unlearn and relearn for myself. We have this understanding that 
what Joseph Smith did is the precedent, except is it just the precedent for our day, for this final dispensation? Because it definitely wasn't a precedent for Adam and Eve, for Enoch, as far as we know. Um, it wasn't one for Melchizedek, as far as we know. Abraham wasn't one for Moses. Jesus, he, that was more like Moses, right? He went up to a mountain like Moses did. So then the question comes to my mind, does it matter? And this is what I had to learn in my journey through all of this. I had to unlearn certain things that I thought were true because I had been raised to believe them. That That's issue number one. The reality is, I, I, I genuinely believe that one of the reasons why the Lord told me to put together the book of Avar, I, 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 so when I was doing it, I was thinking, this is going to be great. This is going to be something we can take out and share with people. And we have a common history. This is a book of scripture that everybody can get behind because it's not dedicated to any church. It's just where we all came from as Latter-day Saints. But nobody really wants that because everybody wants their own version of the story. But on a personal level, the Book of Avar taught me a ton. It helped me to understand that a lot of the things that I assumed were correct based on artwork and things that I had learned reading in books weren't exactly what was said in the journals of the saints that were there. The story that's in the book of Avar, and, and I don't think it's a perfect story. I don't think it's exactly what happened. And that's the conclusion I had to come to is this is this this book of Avar is just as accurate as every other inaccurate book out there teaching us about where the Book of Mormon came from. And I had to acknowledge that in order to receive the plates of brass. And in the Book of Avar, Joseph Smith had to go through the same thing. He had this idea that only one church was correct. But through study and prayer, he discovers that all of them have their own problems and none of them are perfect. So then he goes to the Lord and says, hey, this is what I suspect. And the Lord says, yeah, you're right. So when we look at Joseph Smith closer, we see that the true example that has been set isn't the one with the gold plates or the witnesses. No, it's what he did that mirrored what the others did. Go to the Lord in study and prayer. Learn, seek revelation. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. They learned, and then they took what they were given out to the world. Moses learned right from God, and so did Abraham. But Moses learned, and then he went up to the mountain and got the tablets and came back down. Joseph Smith thought about joining one of the various churches out there, studied on his own, got to know God, went to the sacred grove to pray, to know for himself. The key that they all share is wanting to know God's will and not merely their own, getting to know God personally, seeking revelation. One of the things that the Lord asks us to do is to know him. And there are many different ways to get to know the Lord. Reading the scriptures and praying are obviously one of them, but listening has to be one too. To keep this video short, this isn't going to be the only one that I make on this topic. But I want to start here because I want to set the record straight. And that is, if you want to have a prophetic experience, if you want to know how I went through what I went through, the first step I had to do was unlearn everything that I had been told. Everything that I was taught was the correct way. The, the, the line item checklist that has to happen in order to receive things like this. And once I unlearned that, I was able to truly listen to God and discover for myself what was needed. So I, I hope this helps you understand a little bit better 
how all this started for me. I want you to take away from this video whatever the Lord has for you. I'm hoping that one of the things that he has is the understanding that we can, should, and need to go directly to the source. I think this has to be the video that I start with as explaining to you how I received the plates of brass because the first thing that you are going to need to understand is that you're not going to be able to duplicate whatever it is that I went through, whatever it is that Joseph Smith went through, whatever it is that Gil and Mauricio went through, except for the most important part, and that is building a personal relationship with the Lord. So next video, I'll talk more about this, but I'm going to stop for now and leave you with a thought. When you examine your beliefs, are they your opinions? Are they what you've been taught? Or are they your understanding based on what God has revealed to you? Mormonism is a religion of revelation personal revelation. Even if a prophet says, thus saith the Lord, that's not enough for us. We are commanded to go to the Lord and discover for ourselves whether or not that prophecy is true and how we are individually and collectively supposed to interpret it. That's how we become a prophetic people. So my question for you is, where do you stand on your beliefs? Are they something that you created and something that you owned? Or is it your understanding based on what has been revealed to you by the Holy Spirit of prophecy and revelation? So that's my Thursday thought, and I leave it with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.